So, hello everybody. My name is Joe Previtt, and today I'm going to be talking to you about why I use NeoVim from within VS Code. So let me just refresh this. Okay, cool. And cool. Okay. So the goal of this talk is to show you how to use NeoVim in an unconventional way. So a little bit about me, like I said, my name is Joe Previtt. I work as an open source TypeScript engineer at a startup called Coder, which helps teams move their development environments to the cloud. A little bit more on a personal note, I'm a girl dad. I've got a daughter who's a little over a year. I've got two golden retrievers, and I'm into indie hacking and Star Wars. So if you're into any of those things, hit me up on Twitter or hit me up in Discord after the conference. I love meeting people with similar interests. So a little bit more about what I do in my day job. I maintain an open source project called CodeServer, which is essentially VS Code in the browser. Outside of that, I have a couple courses. I've got a Vim for VS Code course, which teaches you Vim for use in VS Code, and then a TypeScript course. So today's talk, the format for this is a story in three acts, which will take you from the beginning of my journey all the way to NeoVim. So I want to start today's talk with a quick story about how I became interested in keyboard productivity, the gateway to Vim. So picture this, I'm at my first dev job as a self-taught engineer, and it's my first week working in the office after a month remote. And one of the things that my boss likes to do on Fridays is called Feedback Fridays. So we go sit at this little table you see here, and we give each other feedback if we have any. And so as usual, he starts off and says, hey, Joe, do you have any feedback for me? And it's my first job. I'm nervous. I'm a self-taught engineer, so there's a little bit of imposter syndrome. And so I, you know, I just say something very casual, like very easy. I say, yeah, I love pair programming with you. With you. I feel like I'm learning a lot about WordPress because we were building WordPress sites. He's like, OK, cool. You know, we chat a little bit. And then he pauses, waiting for me to ask the question. And I say, so do you have any feedback for me? And at this point, you know, like my heart is beating so fast. It's, I got the first week nerves, you know, I'm just like, I just want this job to continue. I don't want to be let go because of, you know, lack of knowledge or things like that. And he smiles and he says, I do. And he says, you're too slow at the keyboard. You use your mouse too much. I want to see you invest in learning keyboard shortcuts. And so, you know, I stop and I think, OK, that makes sense. This isn't something that I've thought about dedicating time to. So that weekend, I, you know, I, I dedicated the whole weekend to learning Sublime keyboard shortcuts, because at the time, I was using Sublime. And I started to realize the power of keyboard speed. But deep down, I knew this was only the beginning. So the next act in this story, fast forward a couple years, this is called Used by the Greats. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona at the Phoenix React JS meetup. I'm second row, and I'm listening to a talk by Ryan Florence. If you're not familiar, Ryan's the creator of React Router and Remix. And this is right after Hooks came out. So this is a brand new paradigm. But that's not the thing that's got my attention. The thing that I'm focused on is Ryan and his fingers. He's literally moving through this presentation at lightning speed. And I'm like, what is this magic? How is he doing this? And then I realized there could only be one answer, Vim. And that's when I started paying more attention, where I started to realize a lot of these people that I look up to, they have one thing in common. They all use Vim. And I think, why is that? What am I missing? I'm, I'm, I've heard Vim. You can do everything. You don't need to touch your mouse. I'm using keyboard shortcuts, so I'm kind of doing it. I'm still using my mouse a lot, though. And at the time, I'm using VS Code. I've got my workflows down. Big fan of VS Code. Um, and I even brought my Sublime keyboard shortcuts with me. So if you didn't know, there's a VS Code extension. And it lets you use all those same keyboard shortcuts inside VS Code. And so I asked myself, is there a way I could get Vim inside of VS Code so that I don't have to take the full plunge? And after some research, 
I found this, the VS Code Vim extension. So it emulates Vim inside VS Code. So I looked at that as kind of like a replacement to my Sublime keyboard shortcuts. But I thought, is it worth investing? And then there was this one detail that made me realize, I think it might be. If you think about the Sublime keyboard shortcuts that I have memorized at this point in my journey, they can only be used in these two applications, Sublime and VS Code. But outside of that, they're kind of pointless. Now Vim, on the other hand, Vim is this, it's like universal keyboard shortcuts. So if I invest in those, I can use them in Sublime, in VS Code, in any other editor that I want. Uh, I could just use Vim as my main IDE. Even modern tools like Replit and Code Sandbox have Vim key bindings. So to me, it was a no brainer. That was kind of like the next level up. Learn these keyboard shortcuts and have this universal keyboard shortcut language that I can use elsewhere. So that basically wouldn't limit me to these two applications. So now the third act, it's 2022. I'm still using VS Code as my ID. I'm using the Vim VS Code uh, extension, but there's a twist. I'm using VS Code in the browser. And now I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, obviously, because I work at a company that is in this space, but I'm 100% sold on this local host is dead movement. And I've moved everything to a remote development environment. So most of the things I don't do locally, I do on the remote machine, I can access anywhere as long as I have a browser. This is the way. But Vim, Vim is still there in the background as like, dude, don't you want to come check me out? And somehow I also end up uh, following these two DGENs on Twitter. And there's one thing that they keep mentioning over and over, NeoVim. And so I end up befriending Teach and asking him like, hey man, like, can you just, can you teach me of him? And he's like, dude, come on stream. We'll do an hour, I'll teach you the basics. And we do. And we actually use a web-based terminal as well. So we do it all through the browser and it's awesome, it's fun. I like being able to configure things. I like being able to move quickly just using my, my keyboard and my fingers, don't even have to touch my mouse. And it's faster than VS Code, right? I think everybody here knows that. And I still, I'm thinking back to my idols and thinking, they switched to Vim, is that something that I should do? And I'm reflecting and I'm still kind of dragging my feet and I'm like, I don't know, I, I've got this workflow down. And I like it because I only need two things, an internet connection and a browser. Literally, I could spill coffee on my, my laptop right now, go grab my wife's laptop, and I, I could access my development environment very quickly. And I like having that portability, that flexibility of not being tied to a specific device. I could even use an iPad. And so, you know, I'm DM, DMing Tej and I'm like, hey, like, here's all my VS Code workflows. Could I do this easily in NeoVim? He's like, yeah, like, we could definitely migrate those. And I keep tweeting him back and forth, asking, like, hey, is there a web based terminal? Uh, that you know of that I could kind of migrate to. And he finally says this one thing that clicks. He says, any website that does SSH for you, which is basically, you just need an SSH client. And I let that sink in. And then I realized, oh my gosh, the answer has been in front of me this whole time. Code server, the tool I maintain, that is my SSH client. It's literally a giant terminal that I can access via the web, which means I could use NeoVim from it. And so having this realization, I can keep my workflow, I can have this environment that is flexible and browser-based, and I have the portability of that, and then having the speed of NeoVim all within VS Code. And so that's kind of the workflow and the IDE and the tool setup that I've been exploring this last month. So now I want to give you a demo of that workflow. So we're gonna try this. Um, I'm gonna go inside OBS uh, and I'm gonna switch. And so here, I'm just gonna double check. Okay, yep. So 
this is kind of how I access my development environment. This is all on Coder. You know, we dog food our tools. Um, but here I'll open up a code server, which I've done here. And so you can see this is kind of what it looks like. Um, and so this is just, you know, plain old VS Code in the browser. Uh, the Explorer here on the left, I can toggle hide. Um, and here I'm, you can see like I'm moving with my keys because I'm using the Vim extension, right? So like, uh, you know, hello world. Uh, there. Delete that, boom, boom, boom. Cool. So now what I want to do, and we're going to see if this works, is I've got my iPad right here. Now I'm going to scoot this over. I'm going to switch tabs. I've got a Zoom meeting going. And I am going to switch over to my iPad and share my screen. So hopefully this doesn't lag too much on the stream. And I'm going to open up that same development environment and go over to NeoVim. So here we're going to open up Safari. And so you see I have that same development environment. I'm going to open up Code Server. And I'm going to bring this over. And so we'll let that load. Sorry, I've got the mic here. And so now what I'm going to do um, is actually had NeoVim open. So I'm going to toggle that. Uh, I'm going to hit leader key and quit. And so I'm testing out Lunar Vim as my NeoVim distro. So I'll open LVim. So there I've got Lunar Vim. So here, you know, I just switched mid presentation to a different device. Um, you know, one of, I'm still figuring out kind of like my workflow and everything, but here I'll just go to the slides for today's presentation. Uh, you know, I can hit leader and then E, and I can toggle the uh, Explorer on the left. I can navigate up and down. This is one thing I can't do in VS Code, is move up and down the file tree on the left in the Explorer. Um, so if I open, I don't know, the README and hide that again. So you can see the flexibility here, um, the portability, right? I can switch between devices. And that's 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 what I love. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun learning NeoVim. So I'm going to push my iPad over to the side here, come back to the browser, uh, and come back and go to my last slide, full screen. And yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for your attention today. Again, you know, if you're interested in any of those things, if you're interested in uh, indie hacking, Star Wars, whatever, you just want to say hi on Twitter. I'm at JSJOIO. Um, I'm eventually going to write a blog post about using NeoVim encoder in case you're interested in a similar setup. Um, so you can click that link. It'll open to a GitHub discussion and you can subscribe. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much. The clap Sweet. is back. Yeah, yeah. I'm just happy that you also agree that VS Code's file tree is garbage. Oh, dude, it's totally garbage. I mean, just being able to like navigate up and down files with my keys, like that in in itself is like a reason to switch. It, it, here's something that you may not realize, but remember, it's just a buffer, which means you can also just yank a file name if you needed it in the other window, and you just copy and paste the file name as well, right? That's just that's it's my just a buffer. It's just yeah, a buffer. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not anything special. Mm. That's Mwah. crazy. No, but That's I do like it because crazy. in uh, VS Code, you you have to go to the folder and do it. But you unless if it's a top level file, then you have to click the icon. Like there's like all these rules you have to memorize. Whereas it's just very nice to have a consistent experience. So I just love the the file. Sorry, the file tree hurt me. So if you asked me <laughs> you know, a few weeks ago what hurt you, it was the file yeah. tree. Point to where the file tree hurt you. Right it's here. Just right here. Right here. <laughs> right just here. right in this region. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm just happy to see your progression that now you're like, oh, maybe I could just open up NeoVim by itself. You know? Yeah. That, yeah. that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. It'll take some time to get all the workflows down, but, you know, you definitely helped me get onto that train. So thank you. I'm waiting for the day, though, that you just, like, SSH directly from a terminal instead of having to do the browser. Like, that's that's yeah. what I'm... I'm ready for you to just type SSH coder URL and log in through that, but... We each pick our battles. You know, no, no. The, the one day. true ultimate one is that you use the NeoVim API, and Ooh. you make your own NeoVim plugin that you just go JS Joey O E O 
dot login, bam, your NeoVim becomes the one up on the server. Yeah, you could totally do like edit hey. coder slash slash as like a beginning of a like a what you, do you call them? A, a URI? URI. A, an URL. An URL. URL. Yeah. Hey, honestly, uh, I'd be down to try that. You know, who knows? Twenty twenty three. We don't know what twenty twenty three holds. You don't know. We don't know. You just don't know. If I did know, I'd invest in that stock that I knew. Same. Same. Easy call. It Easy. would be, I guess, if you knew what it was going to do. Yeah, I'd already do it. I'd buy puts or calls. You name it. You name it. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Well, well, thanks. Thanks, JS Joey OEO. Follow him at JS Joey OEO on Twitter. Yep. Thanks, guys. Cool. All right. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.